Hello, and welcome to coverage of the test flight of the DB3, nicknamed the Buzzard. And as we see, Chad Win Kerman, or Chad Vin Kerman, sorry, getting started here. The the DB3 is nicknamed the Buzzard, of course, because of its uh, electric engines, its electric propeller engines, as you can see there. And so that's where it got its nickname from. There are numerous uh, new safety features in this plane as as the EDB tries to adjust after the loss of the DB2. The first you'll note is that the wings are huge compared to the plane and so it does not require much of an angle of attack to land. So the landing should be safer. You'll note the wider spaced landing gear which is also key. Importantly for the takeoff though, this plane does not require any rotation in order to lift off. It is already at the correct angle of attack for liftoff and that will ensure that the rear propeller will not scrape the ground. So you will see here the plane elegantly lifting off without any rotation whatsoever. And that's thanks to the massive lift produced by its huge wing. I should note that the, that the pods on the wing are only structural, they contain no fuel, and so they are simply there to provide a position for landing gear. So they carry the landing gear and make sure that it can be properly spaced so that there will be no tipping on this flight as we saw on the DB2. The loss of uh, Dude Ball Kerman, of course, uh, still, still painful to the EDB, and we will see the EDB make every attempt to make sure that this flight goes well and of course all subsequent flights. This is a no frills plane meaning that we don't have any extra cameras on board as we had on the DB2 we had numerous interesting camera views and the reason for that is because there was an impression that perhaps the EDB was not quite focused on the safety on the DB2 flight and so in this case we wanted to make sure that there was no such impression given. So complete focus on the safety of the pilot Chad Vin Kerman as uh, here we are a minute and 40 seconds into flight. Chad Vin Kerman is well over the Pacific Ocean here now and you can see that uh, the aircraft is angled up pretty dramatically and that's thanks to its high thrust to weight ratio. In fact, uh, this plane is capable of flying even on the loss of one engine, either engine. And uh, so that is why it is able to maintain a fairly high rate of ascent and Chadwin will try to get quite high as uh, he's already passed nine kilometers here making his way to ten kilometers at some point in this flight Chadwin will try to break the sound barrier the motivation for this plane in particular and the propeller engines was actually a note by Elon Musk who claims that it would be possible to make a supersonic electric airliner. So an electrically powered supersonic airliner and frankly DDB has no idea how that could be done. The only kind of electric engine they could figure out to use was uh, of course uh, propeller engines as we pass the three minute mark at 10,500 meters here going 196 meters per second and uh, so they're trying out the electric propeller engines in the hope that maybe uh, on, there is an off chance to to push this beyond the sound barrier but uh, the designers don't have too much hope they rate this as as having a design velocity limit of about Mach 0.88 so We'll see what uh, Chavin can do with this, but there's also a possibility that he could uh, reach a high altitude, and that is what he's trying for first. And in fact, if he could beat the altitude of the DB2, that would be quite, uh, quite an achievement with a propeller aircraft. So he is aiming for that. 
and so that'll be the first thing. The chatter back and forth seemed to be just observations about the aircraft performance. And uh, its climb rate is still pretty steady. Much faster than the DB2, though the DB2 had much less lift. Also, uh, less uh, thrust to weight ratio with its engine engines, I should say. The jet engines were somewhat underpowered for that craft. This plane is essentially a flying battery. There is a, there is a huge battery uh, close to the engine in the aft that counterbalances the mass of the cockpit and the engine up front. And um, there's little else to it except for the cockpit, the two engines, and the battery, and of course the wing and landing gear, and the control surfaces. You'll note no uh, canards or horizontal stabilizer in the back. Uh, those were deemed unnecessary. So one important feature of this plane is that there is no shift in the center of mass during flight. Uh, the battery has a depleting electric charge, but that does not change its mass. So it maintains a constant mass, and that is uh, considered safer safer in flight than the, than the constantly changing center of mass in uh, a rocket or a jet. Possibly that means that this is a more attractive alternative as a carrier aircraft for uh, future uh, rockets. So a uh, huge variant of this plane might someday carry a rocket to altitude before that rocket is released and allowed to go its way into space. So we're now past uh, 5 minutes. We can see past 15 kilometers, 164 meters per second now. Uh, nowhere near the speed of sound, but uh, certainly flying well. Performance-wise, getting to a very decent altitude here. If we were going to task this to release a rocket, this would be a good altitude to do it in. So far the maximum velocity I've noted here is 196 meters per second. I might have missed it passing that, but we'll get an official word on the official maximum velocity of this once all the data is reviewed. One thing that's missing on the DB-3 is the air brakes on the previous two aircraft. The DB-1 and DB-2 both had air brakes on it. However, the Elegant Design Bureau decided that uh, perhaps putting the air brakes made the Kerbals more confident in maintaining a higher speed going into the landing. And so they decided to remove that temptation to use the air brakes on landing. thus forcing the Kerbals to decelerate ahead of time instead of coming in too quickly. We see the plane now above 16 kilometers and uh, still going up here. Not entirely sure why the velocity vector is a little bit offset from the direction of flight right now. Chavin looks like uh, he's doing well pushing this aircraft to its limits. But as expected, uh, there is very little chance that this is going to break the speed of sound in horizontal flight, 180 meters per second. Not, not too far off at that altitude, but still significant enough. It's hardly gaining any vertical speed now, and so we're just waiting to see what altitude it can manage. But uh, past a certain point, the expectation is that Chavin will have to turn back, and then on the return leg, on the return leg, he'll attempt to uh, break Mach one in a dive. Is the plan? And so we saw 17.2 kilometers, which is uh, quite remarkable. We are talking about well over uh, 52,000 feet.
still angled up quite dramatically here as as he's now struggling to get every bit of vertical speed he can. He might attempt to uh, flatten out and gain velocity and attempt to push higher. I think uh, he's going to try and do that now, but in fact just flattening out will start uh, forcing him into a descent, it looks like. We'll see. It was difficult to assess the possible flight time of the DB3 ahead of time because of the use of FS coolant and and whether this could be replenished. It looks like it can be replenished in the atmosphere, uh, cooling the engines, but without a good read on how well it could be replenished in the atmosphere and at high altitudes it was impossible to tell it was impossible to tell how long the DB3 would be able to continue going since that is a depleting resource by the way the EDB has asked me to mention that it is soliciting ideas for an electric electric supersonic plane especially a large electric supersonic plane and uh, whether there are any engine possibilities other than a propeller engine for that of course uh, we are looking for realistic designs uh, please do not send us uh, ion engine of, uh, of any kind because that will not be able to lift things off of the earth to supersonic speeds but other than that uh, we are interested to know what Elon Musk was thinking and whether such a thing will be possible possible in more than just theory of course so so send your suggestions and uh, we'll be interested in seeing those it sounds like uh, we've reached our limit here uh, approximately 17.5 kilometers in maximum altitude for this plane which is very respectable for a propeller aircraft of course and now now Chad Van Kerman is uh, turning back maximum speeds have so far been around 200 meters per second but uh, he's going to be putting this aircraft into a dive to see how fast it can go in that situation seems to be having trouble figuring out how to maneuver this plane it is far more maneuverable according to the engineers than any other aircraft or certainly any other rocket that the Kerbals have flown so far in fact there was a great deal of concern that they might overstress it uh, thinking that it was so maneuverable that it could do for instance uh, wild aerobatic maneuvers and so Chavin Kerman was strongly discouraged from attempting any of those uh, there will be no barrel rolls and uh, certainly no Immelmans though they suspect that it is possible to do such maneuvers with this the Kerbals do tend to uh, push things a little bit too far sometimes as we see uh, Chavin is now uh, lined up with the correct heading for the for the runway so as he straightens out now and he's already got 250 meters per second which is much faster than he had been going at any point so far and as he descends we're looking for speeds of higher than 303 meters per second as long as the altitude is above 10 kilometers anything above 300 as long as the altitude is above 10 kilometers or 30,000 feet should be beyond Mach 1 and we see the velocity rising quite quickly now down angle of 30 degrees and there it is uh, he has passed Mach 1 continuing through the transonic region here 
314, 315. Still a sharp down angle, sharp dive here. Three twenty one, and that looks like it'll be it. So three hundred twenty one meters per second. We'll get the official mock reading uh, sometime in the future as the data is reviewed. But of course, in a dive, it's not uh, technically a maximum speed being set. It's just a test of the structural integrity in this kind of flight profile. And we can see it was quite stable, so that's a good sign. Though certainly there's no expectation that this plane will be launching a rocket while angled downward like that. Nor indeed any other plane for that matter. So, Chad Ben Kerman continues on his way back, and now, of course, this is as has been proven with the DB2 and uh, the loss of Dude Bald Kerman. Uh, this is the difficult part, folks. Uh, even though reaching greater altitudes and speeds uh, is the goal and somewhat the exciting part, the dangerous part is, of course, uh, returning to land, especially as we now know that uh, there is a Kraken lurking near the runway. Kerbals have tested a runway and they have deemed the runway itself to be Kraken safe. However, they're unwilling to go out into the terrain or even uh, the taxiways and they've decided that what is called for here is an unmanned vehicle of some sort. And so we will uh, look to see what they come up with as far as that's concerned. The the EDB Aerospace Division is tasked only with creating aircraft, so if they are going to attempt to create an unmanned vehicle that will test where the Kraken lurks, they are going to have to make a vehicle that can fly. So uh, that is the key. We are not cleared to use Vandenberg Air Force Base as a location for rover testing or at least uh, not rover testing if the rover cannot then take flight. Okay, as we see Chavin Kerman lining himself up with the runway properly here. A little bit jerky, uh, possibly because he's still going at a very high speed. Still traveling at uh, 262 meters per second at 6,200 meters. So much faster than he was on the way up. Perhaps that's causing a little bit of problems, though so there was no uh, expectation of instability with the aircraft. It might be the case that uh, aircraft's high maneuverability combined with the use of the SAS system is causing some difficulty. As we see, uh, Chavin Kerman still has SAS on there. Perhaps with SAS off it'd be easier to control, though. Uh, since we do want this uh, flight to be a success, we don't want him to take any chances at this stage, of course. We see descending uh, through 5,500 uh, meters, roughly uh, 16,500 feet, still going at fairly high speed. Though without air brakes, uh, during the descent there's no way to control that except for throttling back and as we know Kerbals are a little bit impatient about about the return leg we hope that Chavin will will learn the lessons of Dude Bald Kerman and make sure that he's going to be a little bit more cautious about the approach we will see whether the safer landing gear placement is in fact in uh, in a good place to help with stability on touchdown and we saw there that the plane was uh, slowing down despite being in the descent so uh, even though it doesn't uh, register in terms of sound the, the buzzer as it were is uh, decelerating and powered down
So, a bit disappointing in that Chad Ben Kerman, of course, is uh, returning without having broken any records in terms of altitude or speed. However, uh, quite satisfying in terms of uh, the success of the propeller, propeller engine and uh, the possibilities of using it to launch rockets in a stable fashion. The DB2 did not seem to be capable of very stable use and the DB1 of course does not have the, the duration that the DB2 or DB3 would have. So perhaps the jets will be preferable as a carrier aircraft, perhaps the propellers. Certainly we expect that the DB4 will be a further development on all of this and we will see what they come up with for that. Basic engine testing uh, now having been completed, we expect some sort of real attempt at, at altitude and speed records. Okay, here's the tense part as uh, we see the final approach here. The aircraft is now below 2,000 meters. Now about, about 125 meters per second. Still fairly quick and fairly high here. The, the word of mission control is that he's probably too high, but they don't want to distract him at this point, actually. Uh, they trust that Chapman Kerman is properly trained for for this and so they'll they'll allow him make to make the judgment himself without any distraction. Yeah, the approach is way too high. And we can see Chapman uh, uh Okay, he re he reports to go around. He's going around. So uh, the DB3 going around after uh, coming in too high and fast to uh, touch down safely. Chavin has uh, raised his landing gear and is now moving on an expedited course over the ocean. He will not make the full traffic pattern. He's just going to uh, go go to 225 as quickly as possible and then come around. He's making full use of the maneuverability of the plane here. Though at some point uh, probably should be tested with SAS off. Then again with all these these uh, harsh maneuvers that it's going through, maybe having the SAS on is probably safer. As we see Chavin Kerman trying to do his best to gauge how far he needs to be away from the runway in order to make a safe landing. Doesn't want to get too high here. And he needs to be able to come in at the right angle. Without uh, all sorts of cameras, he needs to uh, confer with with the mission control about his exact location, making sure that uh, he gets a good idea. We don't have a uh, ILS system or anything like that set up. So right now uh, Chavin is uh, on the outbound leg trying to put some distance between him and the runway so that he can turn around and uh, Looks like he's starting to turn around now, or maybe he's just uh, lining up with 225, the direction opposite the runway. I think that's uh, what he's doing. He's just lining up with the, with the contrary direction. And so uh, he's going to, going to put some distance between himself and the runway and then come around. You can see that uh, he's not 
attempting to gain much altitude here, staying pretty close to the ground, so that at least the, the issue of uh, coming in too high will not be a problem on the second try here. Okay, and now he's definitely coming around towards the runway. As he's flying slow and uh, close to Vandenberg Air Force Base, we can have this chase plane view. I'm not too sure it's uh, quite beneficial for, for general viewers. Uh, as he, when he banks hard to one direction or the other, it's somewhat disorienting. However, it is helpful to uh, mission control as they want to see uh, his approach more exactly and and this will uh, ensure that we can get a good view of the approach to diagnose any any flaws in it Javin Kerman making his final turn towards the runway Not very high at all here. Coming in at, uh, at under 2,000 meters, even under 1,500 meters. Under 1,000 meters. Situation in uh, mission control is tense, of course. Uh, nobody is talking. All eyes on Chapman, trusting his instincts about this. Touchdown. Uh, Chavin reports that touchdown was fine. And uh, so the DB3 successfully landed uh, 26 minutes and 55 seconds into the flight. And uh, we have Chavin Kerman back. He is currently bringing the aircraft to a stop. And we expect that he will also get out for a photo op. This was the first ever propeller aircraft for the EDB and despite not breaking any records or satisfying Kerbals in terms of speed or altitude, uh, it was certainly a successful flight uh, in line with expectations from the engineers. Uh, especially satisfying was the, was the way it took off and of course the stable landing and uh, very, very safe seeming aircraft after a harrowing experience with the DB2. Okay, so we will uh, we'll see Chavin outside now. And there he is. The proud pilot of, uh, of an excellent plane. So, with that, uh, thank you for watching this coverage of the flight testing of the DB3. We hope you will join us for uh, future missions. Probably the next thing the EDB will try to do is uh, launch that unmanned vehicle in order to check out the location of the Kraken and whether uh, various locations around around the base are safe. So uh, tune in for that and with that uh, this is the EDB signing off.